America's evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you for the second half of the Power Hour, right here on TFRLive.com, Truth Frequency Radio, and the iHeartRadio app. And even though I mentioned it at the top of the program, I'll go ahead and mention it here again, just because I do think it's important, and we've been doing it the last several weeks. Um, If you are aware or even have reasonable suspicion in your neighborhood, in your town, uh, in where you do business, that there are illegal aliens around and you know who they are or you suspect who they are, please contact ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, at the phone number of 866-347-2423. That is 866-347-2423. Contact ICE. They can investigate it. And as we've sadly seen this week in the case of Molly Tibbetts, the life you save may very well be your own or one of your loved ones. Now, back to the uh, regular program, as it were. For those of you joining us halfway through here, for those of, us who, those of you who have not heard the whole program, we talked briefly in the first part of the show about the Molly Tibbetts tra- tragedy out in Iowa and some of the reaction to it. And by the way, let, let me just mention one thing. This is not a big part of the whole story, but it's been out there. I want to kind of address it and put it to bed. I've seen a lot of things on social media about Molly Tibbetts during her life and some of her cultural attitudes that she had, that she might have been a social justice warrior, or I saw one picture going around of, of, of her holding up a sign that said, say no to white boys or something like that. Folks... I'm not going to get hung up on that, and I'll tell you why. I, I've seen some of my some of my contacts on Facebook and Twitter say that she kind of got what she deserved because of that, and I don't agree, and I'll tell you why. Um, first of all, by what I've seen, it, it, it does lean towards those things being true about her. Uh, I don't think it's been Photoshopped. I, I've seen enough different good sources on it that I believe it. But... As wrong as that type of attitude was, and as bad as that attitude was, dying is a hell of a way to learn you were wrong. And there's a whole lot of us who back in our late teens and early 20s believed in some pretty stupid stuff or said certain things just to be cool or to be accepted or maybe just made some bad choices. A lot of us grow up out of that over the years. We learn better, and and, and the real world teaches us a little bit, right? Some don't grow out of it, but many of us do. But the point is, Molly Tibbetts will never have that opportunity to grow out of it. She'll never have that opportunity to learn why she was wrong. Because she's dead now, at the hands of an illegal alien. So, while I know some people don't really care much about this situation because of her attitude during her life that some have professed that she had and some people don't really think we should have sympathy or empathy for her to me this this signifies something much bigger that what happened to her can happen to any of us it can happen to any of our daughters or wives or nieces or 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 loved ones and and that's why this is important and so we talked about that in the first part of the show and then we spent some time going through just the whole environment that we're in because of the American left right now. Not only how they have reacted to the Molly Tibbetts issue with uh, with derision and, and with the idea that, as Elizabeth Warren said, we need to focus on things that are important or the real important things instead of Molly Tibbetts or the Fordham College professor on MSNBC criticizing Fox for talking about a girl from Iowa instead of talking about campaign finance law or tax evasion because gee tax evasion and campaign finance law are obviously so much more important than a girl in Iowa right that's what they think and then we went on and told you and reminded you about the whole environment we face from these folks today how they've consistently been on the side of illegal aliens including shutting down the government over it. How they've consistently been in favor of taking our guns away so we can't defend ourselves against those who had put us in danger. How they have consistently now in the the social media world tried to silence 
any kind of viewpoint, any kind of news, any kind of information, any kind of analysis that goes beyond what they've approved. We've reminded you of Antifa and how they've committed violence and assaults and how somebody went beyond just what Antifa's done and how you saw someone shoot a congressman last year, Steve Scalise, a leftist shooting a congressman. We remind you of all the rioting and violence every time an urban thug is brought to justice by police. And we reminded you of all of that for a very particular reason. I know that we all have our daily lives, we all have our jobs, we all have our responsibilities, we all have our families, and so it's, it's awful hard for a lot of us to kind of keep up with all of this. We'll pay attention to the news of the day, but then we have other stuff going on, right? So it, it, it's hard to take a step back and look and say, wow, here's how all of this is fitting together. You don't always see that forest for the trees because you got other stuff to do. I do too. I, I get it. But I took the time and made the point of reminding you of all of this, this gamut of liberal thought, action, rhetoric that is all meant to place you and I in danger, or at least it always has that result. I reminded you of the clear and present danger that liberals in in all institutions, be it government, academia, journalism, Hollywood, social media, wherever it is. The danger that they place before us, I, I, I reminded you of the dangers you and I face every single day for the simple reason that in the midst of all of this, in the literal battle for life and death that you and I engage in every single day, when we merely go about our business. In the midst of that, we now have liberals and Robert Mueller and everybody on that side putting Paul Manafort in prison, getting a plea deal from Michael Cohen, getting him some jail time, and going after President Trump. Now, why am I pointing this out? Because I understand that when we talk about a misconduct of a president, potential misconduct, or we talk about scandal of a president, we most ordinarily talk about that in terms of a vacuum. We kind of discuss it within its own realm. We don't really, we don't often talk about that in relation to all of the other stuff that's going on. But here I think it's critical that we do. Right now, you have journalists and liberal politicians and academics and columnists and journalists and all the rest, celebrities, whatever you want to name. You have all of those people, as you and I speak right now, trying to convince you that President Trump has done some undue things, that he's done some things that are just beyond the pale, and that by golly, we need... We need to get behind impeaching him. We need to pressure him to resign. We, need, we just need to get him out of office, is basically what they're saying. But stop and think about something. And I'm not saying that I believe President Trump has done anything wrong. To this point, I don't. But whether I believe he, he has or hasn't, has any of the things President Trump been accused of, have any of those things, been on the same level of depravity, anti-Americanism, and danger to regular people when compared to what we've seen out of the American left for the last several years. I'm not saying that flippantly. I actually, I actually want you to sit down and make the comparison yourself. People saying Paul Manafort's dirty because he may have hit some money somewhere. And yet we just saw liberals this week claim that the real problem in America is how we treat illegal aliens. Really? Seriously. Tax evasion is more offensive? 
Tax evasion is more harmful to me than you trying to bring a bunch of illegal aliens in here that are going to kill, rob, and murder every last one of us? Absolutely not! Oh, but campaign finance laws might have been broken. Well, so what? You've got liberals out there right now trying to weaken our borders. You've got liberals out there right now trying to take our guns. You've got liberals out there right now trying to silence anything we write, anything we say, anything we want to bring to the American people. But campaign finance issues, that's the problem, really. Go back to the entire reason the liberals started going after Trump from day one. I don't mean day one of his of his administration. I mean the first day he announced that he was going to run. Why did they go after him tooth and nail then? Because he said he told the truth about illegal aliens. Because he told the truth about our economy. Because he told the truth about how all of these institutions in America have failed the real Americans. That's why. Oh no, he's a racist, he's a racist. I don't think President Trump's a racist, but I tell you what. If he were a racist at this point, I wouldn't care given everything else I'm seeing out of the left. We all remember the old phrase he used, and he caught a lot of crap for this when he said it. But he used an old phrase at one point during the campaign saying I could stand on 5th Avenue and shoot people and, and and my supporters would still follow me. And everybody gave him grief over that. But as of late, I'm starting to understand what he meant. The point is, the things we're seeing out of the American left today, not only in a political sense, but in a day-to-day sense, in, in a very real sense, it impacts my life and your life and and whether or not you and I will live or die, those things are far worse than anything we've seen Trump simply be accused of. So in that environment, why would I care what charges you're bringing against him? Why would I care what you might even prove one day? Why would I care when you're doing worse? Someone named... uh, Selena Zito wrote an article, and she's no Trump supporter, believe me. She wrote an article in the New York Post last week, and she, among very few others, started to understand this. I'm going to quote to you from her article here last week. It's in the New York Post. You can look it up, and I encourage you to do so. Ms. Zito says, quote, This new conservative populist coalition is not the fluke the political class hoped it was. Donald Trump did not cause it. He is just the result of it. So no matter what he does, it continues. It is predicated on them, not him. The coalition is a strike at not just tone deafness in both Congress and the White House, but also high levels of incompetence, negligence, and shoddy performance at agencies, as well as inept social services, a bloated and incompetent bureaucracy, endless wars, and multinational agreements and treaties that don't benefit average people. These voters know who Trump was going in. They knew he was a thrice-married, playmate-dating, Howard Stern regular who had the morals of an alley cat. Okay, Selena, I'm not sure I'd go quite that far, but point taken. They were willing to look past all of that because of how institutions had failed their communities for three consecutive presidencies. Actually, Selene, I'd say much longer than that, but you get the idea. Right now, the value of Trump to the Trump voter is that he is all that stands between them and handing the keys to Washington back over to the people inside Washington. That's it. He's their only option. You've got to pick the insiders or him. End quote. It's that last part where she hit it completely out of the park. Repeating for you again, the value of Trump to the Trump voter is that he is all that stands between them and handing the keys to Washington back over to the people inside Washington. 
Let me give you another example to illustrate that. You longtime listeners will know that during the primaries, I actually did not support Donald Trump, at least not as my first choice. I supported Ted Cruz. I liked an awful lot of what President Trump had to say during the, uh, during the, the primaries. But my, uh, my misgiving at the time was that I didn't know if he would actually follow through with it. I had the question of whether or not he was just saying these things to get elected and then he would govern totally different than that. I have been so pleasantly surprised that I was actually governed that, you know, I almost feel foolish for having the doubts I did at this point. But uh, at the time, with the lack of track record, I, I think it's understandable. But I understood the appeal of what President Trump said, and a lot of it was appealing to me. I just wanted to know that he'd be genuine with it. And so I supported Ted Cruz until he dropped out of the race. But during all of that time, I used to get questions from people a lot about, well, how can we beat Trump? How can we beat Trump? How can we beat Trump? And I actually told people how to do it. Nobody listened. In fact, if you go to my YouTube page, there's a YouTube page out there called America's Evil Genius, all one word. At least it's up there right now. They'll probably tear it down any day now. But if you go back in the archives, there is a video I did on exactly the subject, how you beat Trump. And I told you at the time, the way you beat Trump is that you embrace what he's talking about and you just show that you have a better plan for doing it. In other words, you don't beat Trump by saying, oh, the wall will never work and it's stupid. You beat Trump by saying, you know what, the wall's a great idea, we've got to do it. Here's my plan for how to get it done. You don't beat Trump by saying, you're, you're totally overdoing the illegal immigration thing. It's not that much of a problem, you're just foolish. No, you don't do that. You beat Donald Trump, I said at the time, by agreeing that illegal immigration is one of our top issues and by showing a plan you have to keep illegal immigrants out and throw the ones out that are already here. Nobody in either party listened to that, of course. And then President Trump won, and then they all looked at their navels and couldn't figure out why. I bring that up to kind of illustrate where we are today and what what Mazzito kind of pointed out. The election of President Trump was much bigger than Trump himself. And I'm not saying anything negative about him. I'm a big admirer of the man, and he's really won me over as a president. But what has amazed me about him, and what has amazed me about what has happened since he's been elected, is that he has continued to really be the only person at the national level who trumpets for the ideas that he's trumpeting for. I mean, politics up to now has always been a a copycat game. And if somebody has some some electoral success by going after a certain issue or or by uh, advocating for certain things, then you almost always see other politicians try to pick up that mantle and and and, and join in. You know, it's a copycat kind of thing, and at least it used to be. But since President Trump's been in office, we don't see that, which is completely dumbfounding. Not only have we not seen Democrats learn their lesson about why they lost the rural areas in the Midwest and the South. And we've not seen them abandon all of their, all of their little pet groups in the inner cities and and the urban areas to come back to, to middle America. No, they've doubled down on what they've done. That's been shocking. But even Republicans have been, uh, have been in a lot of cases, very hesitant to embrace the wall or embrace how to truly deal with illegal immigration or how to truly deal with our economy. They've been very hesitant to do that. So the unique thing that's done is it's put us in a situation where Trump still stands alone. But the reason Trump got elected was because he trumpeted those things, because he identified with us on those issues. Now, if you're a Trump voter, or I'll put it this way, if you're not a Trump voter, try to stand in our shoes for a moment. Because this is what I think a lot of you aren't getting. If you had a president who got to the presidency by advocating for the ideas you feel are most important and by declaring war on the very institutions that have negatively impacted your life far more than they've positively impacted it, and if he's the only politician out there at the national level that's doing it, then why would you ever abandon him? No matter what came down the pike, why would you abandon him? 
it would make no sense to do so. Let's say, for example, let's say, for example, that we did what the left and the journalists are telling us we should do, and we got all mad and morally uprighteous about a Playboy Playmate or Stormy Daniels or whatever. By the way, I, I can't hardly get mad at him for that. I'd have banged either one of them back in the day. And I might have paid him a little bit of money to shut up. About, well, actually, no. I, <laughs> I would have probably bragged about it. But hey, maybe President Trump is more of a gentleman than I am. Anyway, let's say we did get all morally uptight about that and got mad about the uh, the, the campaign finance crap and the, the supposed tax evasion, all this stuff. Let's say we got we got mad about it. Let's say we we turned on Trump because of all of that. What would happen to us then? What would happen to us then? Who would advocate for our ideas? Who would build the wall? Nobody would. Who on the scene would take illegal immigration seriously? As the number one, number two priority issue that it is, nobody would. No, no other Republican would do that. You see, this is what Ms. Zito was talking about. To turn our backs on President Trump, even with supposed scandal looming, would mean that we have to give up on the wall. Would mean that we have to give up on illegal immigration being resolved. Would mean that we would have to give up and give back the progress we've made with North Korea and with Russia and with other other entities around the world. We have to give up on a, on a strengthened military. I'm sorry, folks. Those things are far more important because those things have an impact on our daily life. Is Paul Manafort supposedly evading his taxes? Is the tax evasion of Paul Manafort going to put my life in jeopardy tomorrow? No. But I'll tell you what might put my life in jeopardy, an illegal alien. Or a Muslim terrorist. Or an urban thug. I'll tell you what might negatively impact my life, a bunch of a bunch of uh, a bunch of regulation that causes my job to cut back. That would impact my life. But that's not happening under President Trump. What so many of you have failed to understand is that when it comes to statesmanship, when it comes to the smooth functioning of the federal government, when it comes to the maintenance of all of the traditional institutions that we're told we always must look up to, when it comes to all that, most of us don't give a tinker's damn about any of it. If we're going to have a federal government, which is hard enough to convince ourselves that we should anyway, but if we're going to have a federal government, the least it can do is protect us from people at the border trying to invade our country and murder, rape, and kill us. Is that too much to ask? No. It's not. And heretofore, at least in Washington... President Trump seems to be the only one with the vision and the balls to do it. It would be much easier to abandon President Trump, and I'm not saying we should, but it would be much easier to abandon President Trump if there were a whole cadre of other Republicans out there who were falling in behind him and and who were trumpeting the same ideas and advocating for the same issues that he is. But there's not. And since there's not, and since we who are the Trump movement have experienced some success, as we are finally, after decades in this country, having our voices heard, whether you like it or not, we're not going to give back our power. And I said our power, not President Trump's power. We're not going to give back our power as a movement just because someone banged a hot blonde with nice boobs. Ain't going to happen. Let me go on record right now. Given the environment the Democrats have put us in, where they are literally advocating for things that will cause regular Americans to die, 
And given the fact that President Trump still seems to be the only one at the federal level who is taking illegal immigration seriously, who's trying to build a wall, and who has our best interests at heart, given those things, there's not a law he could break. There's not a uh, there's not a scandal you could fabricate or come up with at this point that would make me turn my back on him because there's no alternative. Make no mistake, this is not about President Trump. This is about those of us who voted for President Trump and who put him in power. We will not be silenced. We will determine what this nation will do going forward. We will not be shamed by the traditional way Washington has done things into going back into the woodwork. No, we're here. We're here to stay, and you have to deal with us. Thank you for joining us once again. This is Travis Cook, America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next week.